What's going on guys? We are here shooting Comet Neowise. We've actually got some lightning in the frame too. There's a storm cloud right below where the Comet is. And this is turning out awesome. Yes. What a sight to see. What's going on guys? So you're probably here because you either want to see and or photograph the comet we have in the sky. I went out to photograph it yesterday morning and uh, it was probably one of my favorite memories, any of my recent outings. Uh, it was absolutely incredible. And uh, coming up in the next couple weeks, if the comet stays active, this is going to be the best time to shoot it because up until now you're only able to get it in the really early mornings which is when I shot mine and now you're gonna be able to see it about an hour and a half after sunset so that might be a little more convenient people to view during the evening hours rather than the really early morning so in this video I'm gonna go over a few of the settings I used and how I found it in the sky but first please hit that thumbs up it'll really help out my channel Alrighty, let's jump into this. The best part about this comet is it's relatively easy to photograph. Once you know where it is, you can see it with the naked eye, uh, but nothing like it comes out in pictures. But it's easy to photograph because it's, it's relatively bright and uh, you really don't need to be away from any light pollution. Uh, if you really want to get the best results, you could go away from light pollution, but you definitely don't have to. You can use a pretty wide variety of lenses for it, and I've even seen photos of it shot on a mobile phone, so pretty easy to photograph. If you do use a phone though, you will want to have a tripod or lean it up against something, just some way to keep it steady because it is going to take a long exposure photo. Alrighty, so where to find it? So first of all, I'm in upstate New York, so I'm in the northern hemisphere. Uh, depending on where you are, this might vary a little bit. So in the early morning hours, I think it's starting about 2.30 in the morning, you can see it in the northeast sky, uh, just above the horizon. And then after sunset, once it gets dark enough to create nice contrast, you can see it in the northwest part of the sky above the horizon. And when you first get outside and try looking for it, it's going to be tough to see with the naked eye. So was, what I did is I went out in the morning and I took a really wide angle shot pointing towards the northeast. And then I was able to spot it, and once I could find it on the camera, I looked up in the sky and I could see it with the naked eye. But that allowed me to be able to, you know, focus in on my composition and lock in how I wanted it. But that's definitely a good way of doing it. Just take a really wide angle shot, lock in your composition after you have found it. Another thing is you're going to want to shoot in manual focus. An easy way to do this is autofocus on the moon if it's visible while you're out. And then once you autofocus on the moon, just move your lens to manual mode, and this will keep focused on infinity. That's the easiest way to get infinity once the moon's out. So the gear I used for this photo is a Nikon Z6, and all I did was use the 24-70 f4 kit lens that comes with it, and then obviously a tripod because you're taking a long exposure photo. And I don't know, the reason I use just the kit lens is. It's just kind of my go-to lens when I'm first starting something. It's just kind of like a master of all trades. So, you know, you got the wide angle at 24 millimeter, and then you can focus into 70 if need be to get a little bit more of a telephoto-ish picture. So as far as settings go, I used a little bit more of a long exposure than I would have liked, and I'll tell you why. But as far as settings, I used f4, because that's the lowest aperture my lens allowed. Uh, I did a 20 second exposure, and I think my shot was around ISO 1200, I believe. So I used a longer shutter speed than I recommend you do if you go out and photograph it. And I'm definitely going to shorten my shutter speed when I go out again. But the reason I did is there was a lightning cloud below the comet while I was shooting. And it was flashing lightning every, I don't know, I'd say 10 seconds or so. So I used a 20 second exposure to give me the best chance of capturing that lightning as well. Which I did and I absolutely love how that photo came out. So happy with that. And the reason I say 20 seconds is a little long is 
you can, if you zoom in on the photo, you can see some star trailing. Personally, when I go out again, I'm gonna do some different photos. I might use a couple different lenses, but I really wanna use my 50 millimeter f1.8. That's gonna allow me to drop the aperture way down, which will allow for, I'll probably get down to like a 10 second exposure, maybe an eight second. And then that f1.8 aperture, that's gonna allow me to drop the ISO way down as well. I definitely have a few different spots I wanna try. And I'm looking forward to getting out and photographing it again. So when you get out to photograph it and you find it, I'd say definitely drop your aperture all the way down. Start with about a 10 second exposure and then around ISO 1000 depending on what aperture your lens allows. But anyway, that's just how I photographed it. That's how I was able to capture this shot. I'm definitely looking forward to getting out and getting some more shots of it. I got a few more spots planned. But yeah, if you found this video helpful in any way, please drop a like, uh, subscribe for more videos, and I'll catch you in the next one.